Today, we'll talk about what is the better way to measure social impact of your program or investments. Hi, my name is Unmesh Shet. In this video today, I'll be talking about different levels of measuring the social impact. Some me mechanisms really yield better results than others. My goal is to give you different approaches and hopefully you can make the right decision that is appropriate for your organizations based on the situations. So let's start with different level of organizations that we normally see. I will describe them in five different levels. Level one is the organizations who have already developed theory of change but have not been collecting data. Many social enterprise or social purpose organizations focus heavily on the defining theory of change. And that's great. That helps you understand impact map and get internal team aligned towards the various input, output, outcome, and understanding the right activities for your programs. While that is a great starting point, not, not having any data is like bridge to nowhere. There are four situ situations where you want to communicate the impact to your funders it's important to have theory of change, but at least you should make attempt to really understand and collect the right kind of data, at least to communicate either current data or if you don't have a data, you should really de describe your results through the forecasting, some of the impact that you are likely to have altogether. The second level of organizations are typically funder-driven approaches. We typically call level two which has output or activity data driven approach. This approach has been very common in both international development and impact investing sector. They essentially are driven by typically funders and funders typically define the metrics for your program results or product or sales results or service results. In international development, this term is often called monitoring and evaluation. So monitoring evaluation is a term that's often used to assess the performance of the projects, institutions, and the program set up by the governments, international organizations, or NGOs. While this process is fine, fundamentally, the biggest challenge with that is that it focuses purely on the input, activities, and output. That itself does not really define the change that you are creating as an organization. So there's quite a bit of limitations and organizations really doesn't learn and able to scale the impact that they're creating. Third, which is quite used mostly by larger projects, larger programs, it's called randomized control trial. It's level three where program where a randomized control trial or RCT, which is started from the pharmaceutical and the medical industry, this is a common technique that's been used as a, through the scientific ex experiments that aims to reduce the certain sources of bias when testing effectiveness of the treatment. This is accomplished by randomly allocating subjects of two or more groups, treating them differently and then comparing them with response to, with respect to the measured response. And ideas to understand some of the causality of the impact that you create. While this is fairly used in the larger program implementation, it has a huge potential and different randomized results also. In fact, it is really defined by larger institutes like USA, JPAL, and they keep a lot of the data for future programs. Often this really creates an absence of the voice in their developing uh, market altogether. And that's why this is really considered to be have limitations that it's really a light institute driven or funded driven process where the data and decision are often being made by funding institutes rather than done by local institutes. So even if you are engaging them in this data collection process, it is a backward looking and expensive 
and time consuming so on. And the biggest issue with this is that data ownership is not with the institutions who are funding them and as a result the organization who needs the most information about the stakeholder is not possible. Fourth mechanism is called level four where so social return on investment or commonly say as ROI. Social return on investment is a principle based method for measuring extra financial value. It can be used by any entity to evaluate the impact on stakeholders, identify ways to improve the performance and enhance performance of investments. The benefits of this approach are very obvious. It is a number, so that's easy to understand and communicate. You can also benchmark in some cases. Financial terms can resonate to the investors and it allows comparison between the projects or investments which has a different outcome, stakeholders and geographics. While this sounds great, there are many challenges with this approach. Defining the financial proxy can be expensive and time-consuming. It has a subjectivity. It does not take care of the context into consideration enough. And there's little room for qualitative feedback a long time to see the results and evaluation. In other words, it's a backward-looking approach. So what is the best approach? In our judgment, the best way to scale the social impact of your program, especially the organization who has potential to grow quite a bit, they should focus on level five, which is continuous learning and improvement. It's a technique, a social impact measurement process for understanding how much social changes occurred and can be attributed to the organization's activities an impact measurement is not, is not about the measurement, it's about the, what you learn from it. And that techniques, according to Jeremy Nichols, founder of Social Value International, he has given few important tips that we should really consider. Don't just focus on selected goal, but also broaden your horizon of impact learning. Invest in the impact driven champion, within the organization, avoid any excuses for your cost-benefit analysis and don't report data, make a decision based on that and make it a forward-looking approach and not the backward-looking approach. So the, the best way to do it is to what we call it is actually create a, a focus on an immediate outcome, define the impact goal for that and design the process in such a way which is short and frequent and stakeholder driven approach and analyze those results based on multi-dimensional approach. By looking the data in a multi-dimensional way, your ability to understand, explain, communicate and learn the data significantly goes up. We have many videos about impact experiments in a learning channel, so I hope you will enjoy them. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.